Hey, good morning. Welcome to the book of Exodus. Today we're looking at chapter 26, verses 15 to 30. So let's read it. We're just going to read verses 15 to 17. Then you shall make the boards for the tabernacle of acacia wood standing upright. Ten cubits shall be the length of each board and one and a half cubits the width of each board. There shall be two tenons for each board fitted to one another. Thus you shall do for all the boards of the tabernacle. And on it goes, and there's a lot of verses there. It won't do us a whole lot of good to read them. Uh, but let's just look at a couple of bits here that, that I wanted to bring up here for this section. And you know, we're back to that functional versus symbolic question again. How much of these elements that are described of the sanctuary are, are truly symbolic and, and are intended to carry meaning to the reader? Uh, and how much of it is just, uh, this is the way we made the structure. It doesn't particularly have a certain theological significance. And that question really, again, is a question of scripture assigned meaning versus interpreter assigned meaning. And I don't think you really want me to just randomly throw meanings to you that aren't in the text. Now, if we find any flags in the text, any indicators, any inferences or suggestions that that every single rivet and, and thing means something, why then let's look at that closely and, and derive any meaning that, that is truly there, but let's not add to it. As Stewart points out in his commentary on Exodus on page 589, Moses did not just hear words, but he was shown diagrams or blueprints or whatever you want to call them. He was shown a visual representation. And so some of these things that we sort of expected to find every jot and tittle here, uh, we actually find that some of these details are not present, but of course, it obviously Moses was able to see what was needed and communicate that to the crafters. Let me, uh, let me add a few notes from, uh, I think it was Stuart here. What is important to note theologically here is that the cross bracing was simply a construction technique that has no symbolic meaning of any kind. The lightweight framework of the tabernacle made it portable and it was its portability that was symbolic, always traveling you know, with God. We must be sure that we appreciate the significance of the tabernacle without adding to it false interpretations of the meaning of its component parts, as if none were simply functional and all were theologically typological. So. So yeah, if we go on further, and I didn't read it all because it's 15 verses, there's these braces that are there at the end that are put side by side, and, and we are not really given the exact particulars, but Moses was, and Moses was given enough particulars to make the house the way that God wanted it. So we're not going to add details where the Bible didn't give them, and we're not going to infer meanings that the Bible does not anywhere tell us. If you find a spot that unambiguously is referring to this and tells what this means, these different braces have some kind of a symbolic meaning. Let me know and we'll take a look, but I don't think you're going to find such a thing. So anyway, we look at all the meanings that are there, we grasp them, we lay hold of them. These are simply structures uh, that kept the tabernacle standing upright when there was high winds and whatever in the desert that had to be very firm. And so we have the, con the content we have in the scripture. We're gonna just go with the content that's there. So yes, there was a rigid structure around the the tabernacle building in the center of the sanctuary. There are some of these elements described right here about that, but not necessarily uh, were they filled with every kind of symbolic meaning. Here's a picture of my church uh, from up above, and you can see how many pews there are. Actually, I've never counted them, but you can count them right here and see how many pews there are. One of my churches, there's a big area there that we have the PA system and all the computers. There's three computers lined up there. And a person who's looking at this, you know, 300 years from now uh, might look at this and say, well, those three computers, each one symbolized the Father, one the Son, one the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't symbolize any such thing. It's just that we have three computers. Uh, the the audiovisual section is elevated. Well, that doesn't mean that that's where preaching comes from. Preaching comes from the pulpit. But somebody might misinterpret it. So, again, we want to rightly grasp the meanings and not add to it. So we'll see you tomorrow morning as we carry on and see the next business here that we're looking at in the sanctuary system.